Hello everybody, it's Rochelle Melville here from Rock Melon Recycled. Today I'm coming to you on behalf of Lulu Art Mixed Media Supplies. Some of you have been wondering how to start an art journal page. and Today I'm going to show you a very basic page. Basically, you, all you need is some lovely dilution sprays. Now the dilution sprays come in all kinds of gorgeous colours. You probably need about three or four to get started. And the other things you need is a bit of paint, maybe a stencil. I've used a dictionary page here. But really you can use whatever you've got at hand. Art journaling should never be difficult. It should always start with what you've got at home. Grab yourself an A5, an A4 journal and get started today. Now, when you've uh, decided what journal you'd like to use, find a clean page. Because you're using Dilutions inks today, uh, and they're quite poor, so they will actually go through your pages, make sure you leave a blank between your new page. The other thing I always do is protect my workspace all around it. I use some large sheets of paper. Whatever you can find is fine. Probably not newspaper though, because the newsprint will rub off. And just place it between the pages that you're going to use. So this protects uh, the pages in your journal, as well as your craft desk, because really it sprays everywhere. <laughs> So once you've got your work desk set up, you are ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just use some water spray. It doesn't matter what, how you spray it on, you could even dab it on with a sponge. And what I'm doing is I'm really generous with my water and I want my pages to be quite wet for this technique. Okay, so the only thing we've done so far is we've sprayed water onto our page. Now we're going to start off with our colours. So the colours I'm using today in order is After Midnight because it's the darkest and then I'm moving to Polished Jade and then Crushed Grape, Funky Fuchsia, Squeezed Orange and Lemon Zest. Okay, And the Lemon Zest is just used very much at the end. So the way we're using this technique is we're simply going to spray the sprays in stripes across the page and as you can see I'm not making clear blobs, I'm allowing them to mix a little together and I'm um, one line I've got about eight or nine sprays as I go across but that's not really important because as you can see the water is actually going to allow that paint to move and mold together. That's what I love about this technique. It's a lovely marbling effect and then I go I'm just spraying a couple of little odd ones back and forwards. There was a bit of orange and I'm actually doing some of the lemon zest and what it does even though you can't see it now, the finished product you will actually see some of that yellow come out and it's just a beautiful thing just to help a bit blend a bit and to put some dark and uh, light and shade into the piece. So I'm going to let it sit just for a minute but before I do I need to, a very important thing is to grab some paper towel and actually fold it up and get into the corners, the edges I should say, the middle crease. Uh, where your book is sewn because it does seep through the pages if you don't do that. So I'm always really quick to clean up in that one area. Now I just thought I'd have a little bit of a play with my finger and move some of the colours around. This is really optional but sometimes I just feel think it's nice to, to play and um, make some symbols or some meaning into the colours. Now I'm going to need some more paper towel, just ripping off a couple of bits and I'm just going to gently lay them on. I'm not, I'm not lifting all the colour at once because I very much want the colours to blend as they please. So I'm not just grabbing a big roll and rolling it over. I'm allowing some of the colours and even as I'm pressing down, I'm getting some creases from the paper towel and that's all part of the effect that I want. So I'm taking my time and I'm enjoying the art as it emerges. So this is for my soul and not just um, to make colour. This is something that I want to enjoy. So there you can see even those yellow little bits of sprays I've sprayed have all um, come out in different areas and blends. So I'm really going to dab all of it off now before I use my hair dryer to dry it off. I always have my hair dryer plugged in because I'm a bit of an impatient crafter and I'm going to dry everything as I work. And voila! There's the page. Now I'm grabbing some stencils and I'm going to start stenciling. The two stencils I'm using today are both from the company TCW and the first one is called Art Is and it's one of my very favourite background stencils and the other one is Corn Flowers 
full details of all my art supplies that I've used today will be available on my website. Go there if you didn't get the information now. www.rockmelonrecycle.com.au So let's talk a little bit about stenciling. When you're stenciling, you need a stencil brush. You need a brush that's flat topped and quite um, generous and bold in the bristles. Okay, it's a proper stencil brush. You can get them at Lulu Art and you need to, the technique for using a stencil well is not to load your brush up full of paint because when you do that it simply goes under the stencil and it's absolutely, um, you're never going to get a clear print. So the way you do it is you load up your brush and you actually offload. So as you can see the way I'm working, I'm going to take a colour and I'm actually going to put some at the little side and that, this is to simply use a much um, drier paint as I'm going. The paints I'm using today is a variety, some of them are from uh, Diana Wakeley, as you can see on the side there was a, a lovely turquoisey one and this one that I'm using now is the Fresh Lime, I think it is, from the Dilutions range and they are just beautiful paints. However, if you're just starting, just use what you have. Now some white I'm using for this stencil at this time to go through. So what I'm using is my brush with a little bit of paint quite dry and I'm quickly spread this video up so you don't have to watch the entire process but just take your time and you will soon have a lovely background and I use white a lot because what I like about it is it's quite transparent and that means that some of the color that's underneath actually comes through so you can see where it's pink my white takes on a pink hue where it's yellow or green my stencil uh, with the white actually takes on the color that's underneath which is green or blue which I really like and I've just randomly spread them out and I'm going to dry them off now the other thing with your stencils is don't just leave them sitting on your desk after you use them when you've used paint you need to wash them straight away or they do stay or it can be very difficult or they will stay on your stencils and then they don't just look as fine I mean this they still are usable of course but if you want to keep them looking really nice, you really need to wash them off straight away. So, so far we've used both our stencils in a couple of different colours of paint. Now the other thing I use an awful lot of is simple homemade things that make patterns. For instance, this is a bubble wrap and all I'm using is some of my coloured paint on it. And this is where I use my finger because it just makes a really lovely uneven spreading of it. And I push it down, lift it up, turn it round. I don't want perfect circles each time. The idea is I'm making a background but what the green is doing is is um, making um, kind of like a border because I want the um, there's a girl going to go on my page and she's going to be the center of it so what I'm doing is I'm adding some detail and some color around the outside and I used pink and I used green and I used some orange I think there. So now I've got a template of a woman which is available on my website and I'm going to trace around her onto some vintage dictionary paper. I have cut her out and I'm adhering her with adhering her to my page with Mod Podge. Mod Podge is excellent. It's a sealer as well as a glue and it never wrinkles and um, goes really awful. Just use as, as much as you need but it does dry very quickly so as soon as you put it on your piece of um, onto whatever you're using you need to place it onto your paper relatively quickly. Then I didn't want the girl to stand out too much. I didn't want the words of the girl to be the feature. So what I did was I painted it over slightly with a light, with white. And what that did was just send her into a more, um, what would I say, just makes her stand out in a way that's not all about the writing of the newspaper, but it's more just a detail. I'm outlining her with black because I do want her to stand out. And I came up in my, with my, now these are the, uh, the best art journal pens ever. And they're from Uniball and they are the broad um, black ink pen, gel pens. And I highly recommend those. They go over paints, they go over glues, uh, and they're available through Lulu Art as well. Now also the detail I did, there's the detail of the pen. It's a little bit hard to see, but yes, go to my website and it's all there. And the details I did on the petals, uh, on the flowers, I should say the corn flowers, is I just got a, a white pen. And I made the stems a bit longer, if you missed that little bit there. So now I'm grabbing some scissors and I'm cutting out um, some words that I want to adhere to the page. And I use a lot of printouts. I don't use my handwriting all the time, although I do journal, journal my thoughts. So I'm simply going to cut it out into um, bits that will stick on 
and I'm going to also adhere that with the Mod Podge. I use the matte one because I tend to not like it too glossy. Mostly it's underneath the things I do unless I'm doing a collage, but I do recommend the matte one because it's so versatile. And do get yourself a nice pair of sharp scissors if you're really quite interested in doing art journaling. It makes a big, big difference. Okay, so I like to position things onto my page before I actually stick everything down. I think it's really important that I have it all sort of laid out and that I can see it and that I'm happy with it before I put things in that uh, became more immovable. And as you can see, it says, I am not blank like you, I am beautiful like me. So our, we need our other word in there, which is beautiful. I am not beautiful like you, I am beautiful like me. And I'm using some stamps here today. You could certainly use whatever you have in your cupboard to stamp with. These are stamps that I've had forever. Um, I can't even remember where I got them from, but I do use them all the time. It's really worth investing in a few alphabet stamp sets that you can use with inks, that you can also use with paints. And I like to lay out my alphabet in my Word um, on my page directly. So as I'm stamping along, I have got them all round the right way and I have an even spacing between them and that they actually fit. So I'm a little bit um, careful like that because I've made a lot of mistakes. So obviously there's a U missing because I have to use the U twice. And notice that I'm using my finger to put the paint on with. It gives the best coverage. If I'm using a paintbrush, you'll sometimes you get the paintbrush streaks in it, but not when you use your finger. You kind of blob it on and be quite generous with it. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It's all about just getting it on there and I've hair dried it. So one of the last things I need to do now is put on my uh, cut out words of my quote that I've already got cut out and now I'm showing you the Mod Podge bottle that I use. So when I'm using, you have to be, when I'm putting on the Mod Podge at this stage because it's going on to ink, you need to be really careful because it, the inks are water soluble. So when I'm using my Mod Podge, it's, a water, it's water based so we can actually make my background run all over the place. So I'm very careful when I put my glue on. I'm not using copious amounts. I'm just putting enough. I'm also making sure my fingers don't have Mod Podge all over them because they can actually smudge my work or get ink onto my quote words, which isn't a really big deal. But if you, if you want to be uh, extra careful and learn some techniques, you um, can learn that from me. <laughs> so, yep, just with a fine paintbrush, just placing each words of the quote on that give that provide great meaning to me personally. Last piece is going on now with a little bit more of the Mod Podge. And that really is the end of our page, except for the little bits of um, fine work with uh, a fine nibbed the black gel pen, the Uniball. We're just going to go around and make the words stand out a little bit. And again, I'm not perfectly straight. I'm not using a ruler. Just going around them. I'm doing a little bit of shading at each end. Some more than others. I'm going to make it look a little bit messy. That's my style. So it just helps define it a little bit. I am not beautiful like you. I am beautiful like me. I hope you've enjoyed today and the walk through an art journal page for the first time. If you're a beginner, I encourage you to grab some Delusion sprays. They're very simple and easy to use and they make just stunning effects. I so hope that you have as much fun as you do with your ink sprays as I do and I look forward to hearing from you and seeing your work. So this is Rochelle Melville from Rockmelon Recycled signing off um, in conjunction with Lulu Art Mixed Media Art Supplies. So thanks Lisa for having me on your team and I look forward to seeing you all with my next tutorial.